realized that somewhat recently, AI has become really good at language and conversation. And probably a lot of people here have even chatted with one of these AIs through a chatbot interface like ChatGPT or Google Bard. This is all thanks to a powerful kind of neural network called a large language model, also known as an LLM. LLMs are enabling computers to process complex, nuanced language and generate language more eloquently than ever, which is unlocking a whole bunch of interesting applications. So today, I'll give you a little primer on large language models, what they are, how they work, and then specifically how you can use them as a powerful tool for programming. But first things first, what is a large language model? Large language models learn about patterns in language from the vast amounts of text data that they're trained on. They take as input some text, and they produce some output text that's likely to follow. One way you might hear people talk about this is large language models as like a very sophisticated autocomplete. So it's similar to the technology that's been in your phone for many years. It's just infinitely better. And while completing a sentence like, the garden was full of flowers is not particularly interesting, we can get these models to take on all sorts of interesting behaviors by writing strategic input text. So let me show you what I mean. We call this input text the prompt. And here's one way that you might structure a prompt. You might write something like, write me a poem about Ada Lovelace in the style of Shakespeare. We take this text, we send it to a large language model, and we get back something like the text here in bold. This is some beautiful poetics about Ada and her vast mind. And the reason this works pretty well is that a lot of the large language models you're likely to use have gone through something called instruction tuning, where they're essentially trained to respond to instructions. So that's why you might see prompts written like, explain quantum physics to me like I'm five, or reformat the text below into JSON. In all these examples, we're literally just telling the model what we want it to do. But at the end of the day, there is no single best way to write a prompt. Instead, there's kind of this whole field, this whole art and science of figuring out exactly what the best text is to get the large language model to take on the behavior that you want. And that's known as prompt engineering. So if you're starting to think, OK, these models take in text, they output text, they're really good at conversation, they're really good at language, programming is just another type of language, then you're on the right track. There are a lot of different coding use cases that we can apply large language models to, like code completion, code generation, where maybe we're taking and generating a larger chunk of code based on some natural language description, as well as code chat, where you might have a back and forth conversation with a large language model to debug in real time, like you might with a friend in the office. So I'll show you a couple ways that I've been using large language models recently to help me with my coding tasks. Um, the first is kind of some repetitive tasks that I find can be easily tested. So I'm a data scientist. We are notoriously bad at writing Docker files and maintaining environments. So I've been using uh, large language models to help me with this recently. So it's a little hard to read, but I'm instructing the model to generate a Docker file for me. And I've got a bunch of requirements. And in the blue box in the bottom, I'm getting a response back from the model that's got all of the um, components I need for my development environment. But we can also use these models to help us write code in a particular style. So again, sorry, I apologize, but this is a little tricky to read. But what I'm asking the model to do here is I've got some Python code that loops over a list. And each time it loops, it adds one to an index variable. This works. It's just like a little finicky. And so I've asked, instructed the model to make this code more Pythonic. And the response box, and the model is providing code that has the same functionality, but it uses the enumerate function, which is really the way that you would want to do this in Python. And so I think these models can be really useful when you're learning a new language, and you want to discover new conventions, and new functions, new ways of doing things that you just would have not known about before. And then lastly, we can use these models for more wordy tasks. So we can actually generate more than just code. We can generate documentation. We can generate um, some explanations. And so here, I've instructed the model to generate an explanation of some Python code that does quicksort. 
But whatever your use case is, there are lots of different tools that you can use out there. Specifically, all of the responses that I've shown you today come from the code models on Vertex AI. These are large language models that are hosted on Google Cloud, and they're specialized for programming. So they're like specialized large language models that are trained to help you generate new code. And you can do, use them for code completion, code generation, and code chat. And they support over 30 languages. So that means that you can generate code in JavaScript, in Solidity, in Python, and much, much more. So to use these models, the simplest way to do this is just through the UI. It's a simple interface where you can interact with these models. There's a box to type in the prompt. There's a box to select a model. And then there's a box where the response comes back from the model. And once you've had a chance to experiment with this, you can move over to prototyping with the SDK if you want to do this programmatically. I should add the caveat that these models are tools. So they're really useful tools for helping you think differently about your code, debug your code, brainstorm, create new ideas. But they should any output that you're planning to use for a serious application should always be trusted, th tested thoroughly. Like I said, models make mistakes. So if you want to try this out, here's a link to the Cloud Console where you can go and type um, in the prompt box and experiment with any of these models, any of these code-specific models. If you start experimenting with these models, I suspect that pretty quickly you're going to start asking yourself, OK, is there a way I can customize them? And so this is a huge topic, but I want to just briefly touch on two different techniques that you might hear about, which is tuning and grounding. So first, we've kind of talked about how these models are very multipurpose, and you can generate text in mul multiple different languages for multiple different tasks with just a single model. This came up in the panel earlier today when we were talking about these giant models and how the multi-purpose nature isn't always the most useful for a specific application. So that's where tuning comes in. This is when you make a model better and more reliable at performing a specific task. So for example, you might want to tune the model to perform a task that generates code for a custom library or a proprietary code base, or even some specific style or variant of, your, um, of a programming language. And if you're familiar with machine learning and transfer learning at all, the way you tune these models is fairly similar. You need to retrain the model using a labeled data set, and then you get a new version of the model that's essentially customized for your use case. However, tuning makes the model better at a specific task, but it doesn't always necessarily increase the model's like, general knowledge about a topic. So unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as taking a large language model, throwing all your documentation at it, and suddenly it understands everything there is to know about that library. That's where the technique of grounding comes in. This is when we provide a chunk of text in the prompt, and we instruct the model to generate a response based on that chunk of text. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say that we wanted to build a question answering system so that we can have users ask questions about Chainlink. I would have greatly appreciated this service. So in this scenario, our user is asking about trade-offs of cross-chain cross chain bridges. And the response to this, the answer to this question is somewhere in this chunk of context. I just copied this directly from the chain link, link docs. The chunk is actually a lot longer, but I didn't want to crowd the screen. Instead of sending that question directly to the large language model as the prompt, our prompt now becomes a combination of the query and the context. So we might say something like, here's the context. Use the relevant information from the context to provide an answer to the query. If the context doesn't have any relevant information, you can respond with, I don't have an answer. And we can add any other additional constraints, like respond in a friendly manner, use less than 800 characters, anything else we want. But the key takeaway here is that by grounding the model's response in a particular chunk of text, we can trace the lineage of the response, and we can give the model access to external sources of data. So again, just a really brief overview of how tuning and grounding work and where you might start if you want to start customizing large language models. But at the end of the day, you can get pretty far with the out-of-the-box models. And I think as we see these models get even better, 
we'll start to see these large language models become a really key part of how we develop software and how we write code. Everything from using code completion and an API, or code completion API and an IDE, to using a chat model to help you debug in real time, generating code, and generating documentation and unit tests. So I encourage you to go try this out, see what interesting use cases you can come up with. Uh, this is the link to the Cloud Console. Um, you can try it any of the code models. Thank you so much.